everybody. Welcome to Midweek this week as we uh, continue our preparation for celebration. Have you ever heard a time where somebody kind of gave you the backdrop of a song, maybe a book, and after you heard it, it was like you, you sung the song with a whole new sense of meaning. You probably heard the story of the author of uh, It Is Well With My Soul, this lawyer uh, in the Chicago area, great friends with Moody and Sankey, and he had this incredible business. Well, the Chicago fires came and uh, wiped out a lot of his real estate, and he sent his wife and four children, daughters, on a ship over to Great Britain. Um, there was an accident. The ship sunk. Uh, all the kids died, and his wife was the lone survivor, and you know the rest of the story. And then he wrote on the way over uh, the song that we've sung many times, It Is Well With My Soul. I remember the first time hearing that story. It was like I sang that song with a whole new sense of meaning. Another one of my favorite songs here is Love. Pastor Jim has been talking about this passion of his with the Welch Revival. And uh, I don't know a lot about the Welch Revival other than one of my favorite songs came out of that era. And it was a time in Wales where God was doing this beautiful work. And uh, then out of that came this real fresh kind of movement of worship and a song I've loved for years. Whenever I hear the backdrop, it seems like the words go deeper. They just have greater meaning. I find the same thing when I look at Holy Week. The One of the way, things that I have done for years is I trace the days in Matthew 21 and following of Jesus's life. Like on Sunday, we call that day the entry day into Jerusalem. He would spend the evenings in Bethany, most likely with Mary and Martha at the home of, you know, Mary, Martha, Lazarus, just a couple of mile journey from Jerusalem. But that was the day we call it uh, Palm Sunday, kind of that fulfillment of Zechariah, where the scripture says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you. That was a day of celebration. It was a day of friendship, but it was also a day of preparation. Monday came up, and that was rebuke day. If you've ever followed the journey, that's the day where Jesus cursed a tree, and he cursed a whole lot of people. That was the day where he went into the temple and cleared it. I've often thought about that day and the movement of Jesus' life. He had already cursed this tree for not bearing fruit. And then he went to the temple. But he didn't just flip over tables. He kind of cast a vision that we've often repeated here in our church. My house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. One of our well, part of our vision statement is to be a church for the city that reaches the world for Christ. In many ways, came out of that day. Yes, it's out of the exhortation of Jesus to go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the earth. But if you think about that moment where he walked into the temple, this is on Monday. This is a place that should be praying for the nations. And you guys are scheming for your pocketbooks. That was rebuke day. Tuesday, this is what I call prophetic discourse day. It's in the Mount of Olives, just east of the city. It's where he gave his, what we call the Olivet Discourse. What is that? Well, that's the stuff. I know people love prophetic stuff. Well, that's the prophetic day. He's talking about the fall of Jerusalem. He's talking about the return of Christ. He's, it's, it's really his missiological day. But think about it. A lot of missions captures their essence of mission and the missiological work of Christ and the coming of Christ. And everything comes out of that day, a packed day. 
that Jesus was casting the vision of the downfall, but the promised return of Christ. Wednesday, well, uh, they came up with this idea of, you know, the rest day. He was probably most likely in Bethany. Uh, maybe it was he was exhausted because of Monday, Tuesday. I think in some ways because he knew Thursday. Wednesday, there's not a lot recorded on that day. We don't know. But it was a day of preparation for his life. What happened on Thursday? One of my favorite stories. If you've ever been in my office, right there in the middle of a desk, I have this little picture of Jesus washing uh, Peter's feet. John 13 will tell you the story that happened on that day where he washed the disciples' feet. He shared in the Passover. It was the Garden of Gethsemane. All of this on one day. Imagine the emotion of that day where he kind of had a loving confrontation of Peter. Peter, if you're not going to let me wash your feet, how are you ever going to let me wash your whole body? And then there was... The Last Supper, the prediction of the betrayal, the identification of the betrayer. That was all on that day. Oh, it had already been in Judas's heart because we think probably best that it was on Tuesday that he'd already negotiated the deal. But it was on Thursday that it got revealed. Thursday went through with the betrayal of a friend's kiss and the betrayal of another friend's denial. What a day. Maybe that's why he took Wednesday to rest. Because Thursday, from the very beginning of the day to the end of the day, was just this unbelievably emotionally draining day. He was in the garden praying, and then his friend betrayed him. Friday, there was an early death. It's probably Friday morning that Judas took his life before Jesus' life was taken. So that day, too, was a really significant day. It's not just the crucifixion of Christ. It's the death of Judas. It's the, the result of shame gone awry of betrayal. There's the spitting. There's the mockery. The crown of thorns, the nailing of him to the cross, carrying of the cross. I've walked that path. Generally speaking, where they think that path was, it's actually fairly steep. I walked downhill. That whole distance that Jesus walked up would be a steady, steady climb. Hundreds and hundreds of feet, he walked that, and at the end of it was nailed to the cross that he carried. His last words, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. They preceded or followed what I think is probably one of the most compellingly loving statements that Jesus ever gave. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And three o'clock that day, he died. When I take that journey with Jesus, and I will next week, and I hope you do too, I will be reminded that his suffering was real. He faced every one of those emotional issues, culminating in that point where God poured the wrath of sin on him. And his father turned away. I know the end. I know the resurrection. But I want to take every step with him again, starting this Sunday. His suffering becomes personal because I hear him say to me, Father, forgive Mark, for he knows not what he was doing. His suffering becomes transfigured transformational for me. 
I realize that it's through suffering I gain freedom. I realize that the wrath of God was poured on him so that the grace of God may be poured on me. Every time I take communion, every time I look into that cup, I think of two cups every time. The cup of wrath that Jesus drank so that I could drink the cup of grace. That came out of a time for me. I spent just a little bit of time when Carrie and I were in Jerusalem at where they believe Jesus spent the night before he went to the cross. It's pretty certain there's a lot of guesswork on a lot of the sites, but this one has some fairly high probability. And I just sat there in that little seat shelf where more likely than not, Jesus spent the night thinking you and me, where he was in that prison, headed towards all of the things that he would head towards. His suffering becomes hope for me because it's through that I have forgiveness. It's through that I have the assurance of heaven. In this last COVID season, we've had a lot of dear friends in our church pass away. To my knowledge, all the ones that I've thought of are all in heaven today. Dell just went to heaven not too long ago. Norma, Betty, and maybe soon another friend. As I was praying this week with a friend, just envisioning heaven. The only reason I envision heaven is because of next week. The only reason we talk about a future is because of next week, because of the death and the resurrection of Christ. So I hope you'll walk through that week with Jesus. I will. There's some things that you can do. Number one, read through Matthew 21 and following. Just go through that and in the other Gospels. It will really be helpful. Every week, next week, starting on Monday, the 29th, there's going to be a little uh, devotional that's going to come out to you. It's going to be posted on our website, and it's going to come, and our pastoral staff is preparing. I've seen one of them. It is going to be so good. You don't want to miss this. In fact, you'll probably want to share it with a ton of your friends because it's really going to be just really delightful and reminding us and walking us through each of the steps that Jesus takes. I can't wait for you to see it. Uh, prayer time on every night, 7 o'clock, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Thursday we will take communion together, and then Friday will be Good Friday. So to whatever degree you can, online, in person, engage in the journey with Jesus' life and just follow it. I think you'll be blessed and deeply encouraged. Yes, next week, not this weekend. This weekend we're going to continue in the series uh, out of 1 Corinthians, what matters most. We're going to continue right in that through Easter. We're going to take a little jump out of 1 Corinthians 13. We'll be in another passage, same theme, but we'll do that. So this weekend, we're in that series. Then the next weekend is Easter. Yes, please do sign up. Uh, they're filling. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be just so fantastic. And uh, if you don't care when you go, choose Saturday night or Sunday morning at 8. Uh, those are the most open, and even those are getting up there, so it's going to be great. So please sign up. It's helpful. If you can't figure out how to sign up, just call us. We'll take care of you. So prepare for that. The devotional starts on Monday, and uh, I can't wait to celebrate with you both this weekend and for Easter. The journey of Christ's life was real. It happened, and because of it, resurrection is possible. Forgiveness is possible. Hope is possible. So I look forward to celebrating that with you. God bless you and I hope you have a great day.